Okay, welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and we have a real treat for you today. I'm talking to Jessie Rothwell, who is a writer, a poet, and she has worked with kids of all ages, including coaching kids regarding their writing abilities um, in a variety of formats. So we're going to talk with Jessie today about many things, including how to nourish your kids' creative writing ability, your kids' writing ability in general, and tips that Jesse has for giving guidance to your kids in general, particularly about their writing. So Jesse, thank you for speaking with us today. Really appreciate thank you, you being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, so you've worked with kids of all ages, mm -hmm. uh, including adolescents and teens, mm -hmm. um, and you've been a writing coach. Mm -hmm. And currently you have your own, have launched your own uh, business coaching kids. And in addition, you also edit uh, kids' college essays for a consulting company. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So the coaching services you provide to kids, I'm interested in kind of what those are, how you describe that. Um, yeah. So thank you so much again for having me. I, um, have been focusing so far in terms of the business, which is, which is relatively new, um, on working on essay, working on personal essay. Um, it's a form that I have loved for a long time. Um, it's a form that I think, um, you know, it, it, it is, uh, it's a, it's a nice size form, you know? Um, and I think that for me, what happened is that from a very young age, I was always um, in very introspective. Um, I always um, felt like I wanted to examine everything and make sense of it through writing. That's how I processed. That's um, That was how I made sense of the world and myself in it. Um, I was uh, pretty uh, intro introverted, um, as a kid. And I, uh, spent a lot of time digging into, um, myself and the world in terms of in, in writing. Um, and the essay is, is, is perfect for that. Um, the, the personal essay. I was also an artist growing up. I was a musician. I was a photographer and professionally, what happened was that I started writing about the arts um, after I graduated from my second degree. And then that led to doing some arts journalism and things like that. Again, as you mentioned, I've always been a poet. So I was doing all these kinds of different, you know, all these different kinds of writing. And in terms of now helping kids with writing, I feel like it very much is that initial instinct that I had to dig into myself and um, reflect. And I think that that's something that kids today especially aren't being mm -hmm. taught and and allowed to do in in a real way. I think you know there we have all of these things they can you know run rings around me in terms of their technology use but right. um, but can they really talk about what matters to them and what, um, you know, how to express yeah. what they care about on the page. You know, I, I right. just think that that's so important. Right. Right. No, I love everything you just said. I have a lot to say about that. So I'm going to try to be <laughs> Please. I like to talk. Come um, back, put a pin in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, that that's a huge issue I see is that we are con people are wired and part of this is the technology use. Uh, people are now wired to just have take inputs, inputs, inputs all day long. And like I grew up an introvert too. It's kind of cliche, right? The writer who's an introvert, but yeah, right. You know, it was totally me, very internally focused, mm -hmm. very comfortable with my own company. Didn't need outside stimulation. Yeah. Like to be alone and read yeah. and think about things and do yeah. some writing, and some journaling, all that stuff. Yep. And that's what I love about your work that you do is helping kids do that which is so kind of, it's not really consistent with no. how society is wired today no. and like the screen exactly. addiction and all this stuff and the screens, you know, I'm not saying they're all, the technology is all bad, but no. in moderation, no. right? 
Right. But yeah, it. I love to see kids thinking like, just thinking and pondering for themselves. And one thing I always tell parents on this channel is don't schedule every minute of the kid's day. Let no. them have time by themselves because they use that time. If they're bored, let them be bored. Exactly. I would, I've always been a daydreamer. There is, I cannot remember a time when I was not daydreaming about something like I've absolutely. always been a daydreamer right absolutely like that's when you're exactly bored you say that too yeah right and that's a lot of writers that's where their you know storylines and inspiration come from right so yeah. I love that and it also sounds as you describe you know what what you would do as a kid as far as writing and journaling it sounds like it was almost a kind of a therapeutic process it's abs ab that's using exactly right. right you know that's healing exactly. through writing exactly. and that's been the case for me when I write fiction drawing on some of my own experiences and getting kind of bringing it up and writing it and seeing it on the page is a form of therapy so I it's it's completely we cannot really have a discussion about the writing without bringing that up. And like a lot of parents mm -hmm. that I work with and parents that watch this channel are themselves coming from a place of childhood trauma. Right. And they're reparenting themselves mm -hmm. at, and learning to parent their kids at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this is a modality, like a really therapeutic healing modality that, that can work for a lot of people. So 100%. I love what you do as far as helping the kids just develop the writing abilities yeah. Personal essay, for example, persuasive writing, all these are excellent skills. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's so, so that's great. So in your, your current business coaching kids, you'd say it's mostly, you're mostly coaching them regarding writing essays, other types of writing, like the whole, like what, I what, mean, what anything, they, well, anything they're okay. called to write. Um, okay. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, you're fine. Um, anything they're called to write. Um, and certainly, you know, if if it's something where they need to be finishing assignments for school, like, right, I'm here to help for that. Um, you know, one of the things I've I've actually been interested in doing is um, helping kids prepare speeches for um, when they are um, for Jewish kids when they are bat or bar mitzvahed. Um, they have to give a, a talk as part of that ceremony, as part of that um, ritual. And um, that talk, you, you know, they're, they're sort of taking things from the Torah. And, okay. and I'm not, um, I have Jewish ancestry and background, but I'm not uh, a practicing Jew. However, I've attended plenty of bar and bat mitzvahs, including ones from, you know, with people in my own family. And, you know, it's, it's, it's partly that writing process of a speech and it's partly actually getting up and doing it. So right. all I'm saying is um, it can be at any stage of development and it can be sort of any form of personal writing. I think, I think the key is right. the personal writing right. and it's exactly what you say. It's therapeutic. Right or, or ideally it is, um, right. it doesn't right. have to be. And I think, you know, with regards to leaning into the college application essay, right. Which is kind of where I've been leaning into there's, there's so much pressure, right. There's so much yeah. hoopla and, mm -hmm. and fear and anxiety around it. Right. Because it's yeah. this thing where, the, you know, oh my God, this is the rest of my life. And first right. of all, you know, I want to disavow people of that, like college is a stage and it's an important one, but right. it's not the rest of your life. And, and anyway, that's a whole other discussion, but, um, but in terms of writing that essay, um, there's a lot of uh, anxiety and, and I want to be here to make that process not necessarily all fun, but, you know, stabilizing and, right. and a growth opportunity, you know, right. not just trying to rush through it and, you know, right. uh, what's the word, like, um, white knuckle it, right? Like, right. I, right. I want to make it um, a, a place where they can be empowered and, and grow. Right, right. And it's, that's a great lesson, because it's like, you know, you can tell kids, this is hard. I get that you have anxiety about this. That's okay. Yep. You can do hard things, right? You yep. can do this, even though it's hard, you can do it. It's not the, you know, 
be all and end all, obviously. And, yeah. and it's a lot, you know, I live in the DC area, mm-hmm. it's a hyper competitive area. Yeah, and exactly. I, can feel, I can see a lot of kids. The kids are having anxiety earlier and earlier, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And my therapist told me, you know, anxiety, more people now have anxiety, are diagnosed with anxiety disorder than depression. And I'm in not, this country, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So, I mean, look at like right. the last three years, right? Like, yeah. Hello, yeah. the you know the pandemic yeah, exactly. hasn't helped. And I mean, right. it's just a crazy yeah. shit show, right? No. So you know, to a, to a kid, to a teenager who you know, they don't have the perspective of an, of an adult yet. So the college essay to them is almost like this make or break thing, exactly. right? And if they're getting pressure from the parents or, you know, guidance counselors at school or teachers or whatever, then it's even worse. So I I tell parents that parents are like, well, they have to take this seriously. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's their call. And if they, you know, are just going to throw it together or not give it the importance that you, the parent, want them to give it, that is really not your call at the end of the day. So, I mean, that's kind of how I deal with that question when when parents ask, well, they need to do this and it's important. Yeah, but they're 16, 17, 18. Like, I mean, if you're doing everything for them now, when they're that age, how are they going to survive in college? Yeah. So that's the thing. In a hyper competitive atmosphere, like where we live, it's, it's the odd parent that can do that and be like, you know what? I'm not going to helicopter. I'm going to let you do this, let you handle this. I know it's hard. I know it's probably giving you some anxiety. You can do it. Whatever happens will be okay. Whatever you write will be okay. And, yep. you know, you will do great. Boom. Like be supportive as opposed to here's what you have to do. And why didn't you do this? And do-. I see that a lot. The pa- the kid coming to the parent with questions and the parent taking the opportunity to criticize. Yeah. We well, didn't do yeah. this. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. Yeah. Well, now the kid is dissuaded from doing it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I'm exactly. not saying there's not room for improvement, but sometimes, you know, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of giving guidance as opposed to telling them what to do right absolutely and i mean that you know two things about that i mean you know you're you're saying that the, the parents maybe need to let the kids be on it and i agree with that right. at the same time if the kids do want to guide like that's what a third party right. do and i'm not i'm not going to re- i'm not going to try to replace the parents and tell the kids what to do. I'm here to be a guide, right? I'm here to be a guide and to hopefully even maybe bring the family closer together in the process because I want the kids to take ownership of it. I -hmm. want them to realize that it's not the end all be all, but that this is an opportunity for them to think about what's important to them to, exactly you know, figure out, um, what, what they love to, you know, what they love, what they love to do, what matters to them. Um, and I, and I certainly think that most teenagers have some opinions, even if they don't, you know, even if they're shy about those, or even if they're not sure what they are. Right. Right. And that actually brings up another really interesting point. I think sometimes I, it seems that a lot of adults think that because kids, teenagers are younger, that their opinions are just, they don't, Uh either they don't matter or they kind of discount the opinions or they can't learn from them. I tell parents this all the time. You can learn from kids. I've learned a ton from my kid. You can learn from kids. Be open to the kid teaching you stuff. That's empowering. For yeah. the kid to be able to teach the adult something they didn't know how to do or give them information they didn't know, that's yeah. empowering. It helps the the parent-child relationship for sure. Yeah. Totally. I mean, and sure. kids have perspectives, even if they don't have the, the you know, lifetime perspective or, you know, the, the right. longer perspective. Right. But, um, they have perspectives that we can't have because you know, sort of like, it's almost like the zeitgeist of, you know, it's like the, the, the things that are happening right now, they're so ensconced in them. They're so attuned to them Mm -hmm. in a way that I think, you know, people who are older, maybe, maybe don't, maybe. Right. Exactly. And, you know, new things, we have all this stuff 
that's now we didn't have his kids. That's like a completely different experience, yeah. right? Uh, you know, I've always been a gamer, but we didn't have online I mean, gaming. Like I was in, you know, gaming on Nintendo 64. I don't even oh want to say God. what year it was. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, now it's online gaming. And I, I used to game with my kid. I still do occasionally, but it's all online stuff. And it's completely different. Yeah. It's a complete, the, the whole PVP player to player battle royale type. Yeah. That, that didn't exist when I was a kid. Yeah. So and because I don't have kids, I don't, I don't know nothing about the right. game. Thing, right, though. right. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's like you said, parents can learn from kids and should be open to that. It doesn't mean the parent is somehow deficient because they're learning from a kid. It's, it's, it's no, not that gosh. at all, you know, I can't imagine right. thinking that like, no, yeah. but I, I mean, like, like it's, you know, I think those parents who were raised in a household as kids themselves were that was you know the prevalent attitude it's it's hard to shed that even if you're consciously you want to do better it's this you take a long time and like you know getting rid of that negative conditioning so mm -hmm. so um yeah but yeah we do totally learn a lot from kids so you talked about you talked about jesse like giving the guidance to kids right into writing and i love that because parents can kind of delegate this process to you as far as the writing the essay writing Mm -hmm. So the parents can be more relaxed about it. Their kids are getting yeah. quality yeah. guidance, right, on the writing. Yeah. So how receptive are, I want to speak specifically about adolescents and teens, how receptive are them to your writing, coaching, and guidance? And do you have any advice for parents on, like, giving guidance to kids, how to give it in a way that kids may be more receptive? That's a good question. That's a really good question. And I'm, I'm still, you know, learning how, how different families, sure. you know, sort of function and interact. I think, um, you know, the, I can, I can tell you that the, the wrong way to, um, to approach the kids is um, in a sort of, you know, I do it because I'm the parent and I know best and that kind of thing. Like that, right. that just shuts things right down. Um, right. I, I think, you know, if, if parents can sort of approach the kid by saying, look, let's um, let's sort of tackle this together if we can. Um, that's not, to, you know, that's not to say that I'm doing this with you or for you, but right. um, let's create a plan, right? Let's create maybe a timeline. Let's create landmarks on that. Um, and then, and then, you know, to have a third party come in if the right. kid needs it and wants right. it, um, right. uh, to, to actually develop the, uh, the story. Right. And, and, right. and in terms of the, the essay topic, you know, there's a lot out there about, um, with with regards to the college essay topic there's a there's a lot out there saying you know oh it should be about this thing or not about this thing there's like so much conflicting information some people say that the topic matters you know this much some people say it matters not not at all you know right because colleges now you know there's the caps essay right the caps essay is the common application essay and and there's a certain number of prompts and kids choose a prompt and they have 600 yeah. words and oh, wow. um, and and so you can imagine that with six or seven prompts and umpteen thousand applications many thousands of kids are writing about the same things right mm -hmm. i mean they're responding to the same prompt right um, some of them are writing, you know, obviously there are different things within each prompt, but what I'm saying is if it, you know, if thousands of kids are responding to the prompt that's asking, you know, talk about an important event in your life from, you know, the last number of years or whatever, how do you, you know, how do you sort of differentiate? Right. And, yeah. and I think that that comes in getting very specific, getting as personal and, and um, vulnerable as you can. And, and then really honing the, the tonality of, of the 
sort of the sound of someone's voice, right? That's, it's, right. it's really about the voice. Yeah. Is what I'm yeah. Um, that's how you differentiate yourself in, okay. in a piece of writing. Um, gotcha. It's funny, you know, in all of the classes that I've taken on essay and, and on uh, narrative nonfiction and, and these um, kinds of writing, it's a memoir and things like this, it, you know, you think it's sort of this um, sounds like it's this contradictory thing where you say like, oh, you need to get more specific. Um, oh, but then that's going to be speaking to only a few people and it's not mm -hmm. going to resonate more, more mm -hmm. universally. No, it's the mm -hmm. opposite. The more specific you get, the more universal you can. Yes. Get. Oh my gosh. Sound. That touched on something really important that when you put yourself out there, it's kind of counterintuitive, but when you put yourself out there in the way you're describing and are vulnerable, it's quite validating that so many other people have had similar experiences. Right. right. So that is, that's very gratifying. So it's hard to put yourself out there, but when you do, you'll notice I'm not actually alone in this experience. A lot of other people have had similar yeah. experiences. Yeah. And I mean, one, yeah. you know, this is just, it's not like you're, it's not like these these kids writing these college essays are trying to publish necessarily, right? right. Or trying to publish this on a blog right. or something. They're they're writing right. it for a, a reader for um so it so that might alleviate some pressure of like, oh my sure. God, be vulnerable, right? Right, right. And again, this is another reason. I don't think that the, the parents should necessarily be looking at the kids' essay. Now, right. you know, maybe hopefully some of them want to share at the right. end, right. When it's done because they're proud of it, because it's, it's, it's a good piece of writing. Right. But I completely understand kids writing something that they're like, you know what? No, I don't want you to say. Right. Yeah. I, that, yeah, I think the parents should respect that. Like, you know, that's 100%. if they don't want to share it with you or if they're not ready, respect that. Be like, no problem. You can share when, if you're ready, if you're not ready, that's fine too. It's your essay yeah. It's for your application. Right. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I totally agree with that. Parents should respect that. Yeah. we we'll give, you know, and, and kids may want privacy about, yeah. and obviously we'll talk about, you know, we're talking about college essay is a different, different writing structure from like a memoir. It's completely different, sure. obviously. So we talk about like being specific and being vulnerable in a, in a memoir. I've read, I love reading memoirs and I'm, Me it's too. always, I'm always grateful to the author for, for being vulnerable and also identify so strongly with a lot of them. Like, wow, like this was similar to my experience. And now I feel like this is more universal than I thought. And that's, that's a great okay. feeling. So obviously okay. like the college essay experience, very limited amount of, of time, you got a very limited amount of space, right? Limited words. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. You know, it's harder than people think like well, authors were writing our, or blurb we hate that because we've got to put this whole novel into this like one paragraph right this blurb. oh my god it's I, torture we, it's like what we dread i'll write a 60 70 000 word novel no problem but i don't right. want to write this blurb but so the, the yeah. you know the 600 words it's like what two pages a page and a half yeah. it's not very much so no. it's hard to distill you know something so meaningful and powerful into it this limited really amount weird. of it's space. really, really hard. So and I can see where somebody with like your background is very helpful. This is great because parents can delegate this, you know, to, to somebody like you and kids get this professional writing guidance, right? Yeah. And, and the parent doesn't have to, you know, take it on because parents, sometimes we feel like we have to take this on. I'm doing it. We feel like we're doing a disservice to our kid if we're not heavily involved in this. Well, by this, by this time and this age, the kids really need to be responsible for their own work, right? So yeah, these yeah. are all really, really important points. Yeah. Really important. But you generally, it sounds like the kids have no problem taking guidance from you. I think generally that's, that's the case. Okay. I think generally they're very happy to yeah. have somebody who's not their parent. Exactly. That's the and it's hard to ask for help sometimes. I think parents need to remember you know, because not everybody's a natural writer. A lot of people don't like writing. That's fair. They have other strengths. Some yeah. people I know are mechanically inclined. I'm not. I, I can't, you know, <laughs> do anything mechanically related. Um, but some people are gifted in that, but don't like to write. I like to write. I don't like to do the other stuff. So that's mm -hmm. fair. 
everybody, well, every, almost everybody, right, that wants to go to college has to do these essays. Not everybody's a natural writer. Not everybody's going to enjoy the process as much. So parents, you know, it's helpful to recognize that some kids may not be as into writing. That's fine. They'll be into other things. Right. Absolutely. And the thing um, is, again, yeah. just because they're not natural writers or don't love it doesn't mean that they don't have things to say. Exactly. They can't get that out for this purpose, which exactly is still exactly how it goes. Yeah, that's all really good stuff. Yeah, it's really good. This is all really good for parents to hear, especially parents of adolescents and teens going into that process where you're getting ready for college and not just college you're getting ready to send your kid out Mm -hmm. into the world and obviously they're still going to need guidance from you and if you've created this strong relationship they will come to you asking for guidance and asking for help so getting back to what we were talking about it's okay for kids to ask for help if they say hey mom dad i need help with writing or help with this hey no problem you know Mm -hmm. we will get you help like no Mm problem not every kid does well in a traditional school environment if you need help We'll find a different way of structuring this. We'll get you help. We'll get you tutor. No mm-hmm. problem with this. this is no problem. It's about having, you know, helping you learn the material that's going to serve you well in life. It's not about the grades. It's about right. helping you learn this stuff because it will help you later in life. Right. right in the end. So, right. yeah. Right. Really, really good points. I have to ask you, Jesse, you've got given us a lot of information about like essays and writing a good essay, especially for college. Is there anything else you would, you want to share about, college essays in particular, because I'm sure I'm going to get that question as far as what makes a good college essay uh, in your, this is obviously in your opinion, you're not going to speak for all admissions. admissions, (laughs) Definitely not speaking for all admissions. Your opinion, what makes a good, you know, college essay that stands out and that, you know, shows a personal side of the applicant? Um, It's hard to, it's hard to generalize about that. I think, um, you know, I'm not going to say it's, you know, about such and such a topic or, or again, that kind of goes back to, I, I was sort of right. saying, um, some people say these topics are good. These topics are off limits. Like, I, I'm not going to say that. I will say that my predilection, um, I really love reading things that are not necessarily sort of big sweeping um, stories about the most important moment of my life. Like that's fine. And that can be really powerful. Um, But I love finding this, the sort of beauty in the mundane. I love, you know, finding those little moments that we might or might not really recognize or notice generally Um, and sort of capturing one of those moments and bringing it out and sort of then again, getting, this goes back to the hyper specificity, getting really specific about some small thing and what, you know, sort of imbuing that with bigger meaning. Right. Right. Um, Right. I can think of all kinds of examples that aren't college essays, but yeah, but yeah, I think, um, I think that it's, it, again, it, it's really about the kid's own view and the, and the kid's yeah. own, the kid's really um, getting very, going, going deep, right? Getting right. like really right. reflecting and going deep. Um, yeah. I love that. I, that's important because, you know, even if you're, just because you're 16, 17, 18 years old and maybe haven't had the dramatic life experiences that maybe somebody else has had, somebody else older, right? right. Does not mean you do not ha- have anything important to say. Exactly. Exactly. Your reflections are important, right? Your reflections on exactly. the mundane, on other things. And it's about yeah. giving a voice to kids. And as we've talked about, that's empowering. And when yeah. parents help the kids find their voice, I mean, that's just like, gives me goosebumps. It's like, it's empowering and it helps the parent-child attachment. And it, you know, communicates to the child, you know, my my parent values my opinion, my voice, what I think, 
-hmm. And that's, I really cannot overstate the importance of that in the parent child attachment. And also as you're sending your kid out into the world, right? College and beyond, that's the relationship model they're taking forward into all the relationships. I have a voice too, and my voice is important, right? And I want to be seen and heard too. Yeah. So this is, you know, what you're doing is really, it's beyond just the constructive aspects of writing. It's, you know, helping kids have the voice, helping parents ha- help kids find the voice, respecting and honoring the voice and setting them up for this, for frankly, like an emotionally healthy adult life. So yeah, I mean, yeah. that's like, it's really, you're really important. Like, I hope you realize the importance of the work you're doing. Like, that's fantastic. So thank you. And yeah. I just, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, um, about I'm I am thinking more specifically about some of the the ones I've read. I think that um, you know you can you can write and this really speaks to how important the writing is itself. Is mm-hmm. you know is that you can write about a trip to the grocery store mm-hmm. with your father, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe you know the relationship with your father or the, you know, maybe your father um, has, you know, X, Y, Z issues, or I I think that, again, this speaks to how things can, can be about what they're about and they can be about Mm -hmm. something bigger too. And actually um, it reminds me of, uh, a book that I, that I read, um, called the situation and the story okay, by Vivian Gornick. Um, yeah. and it's a book about, uh, basically memoir or, or narrative nonfiction, um, writing the situation is the, w- what moment we're in and what's happening. The right. story is the bigger context and meaning. Right. So, right. Anyway, that's, that's just some yeah, geeking no, that's, out on. Yeah, on. that's exactly right. Yeah. Um. So Jesse, you're going to share with us kind of an example of this kind of finding meaning in the everyday stuff. So this idea that kids don't to write a good essay, including a good college essay, they don't have to write about something earth shattering, right? So let's exactly. hear your example. You exactly. Got so yeah, I mean, again, I've read dozens and dozens of essays there was one in particular that sticks out because um it really was this example where the question that the that the student was asked was about talking you know the the prompt was talk about how you express your creative side right and of course you know that prompt really speaks to me but that's and that's just a personal thing like that's a prompt that I would have been excited to write about um by the way I was totally the kid in high school who was like super excited to write my college essays (laughs) like the only one right um but um but this girl wrote about blogs um she she wrote about writing and she wrote about you know the idea that writing can be really frustrating but when something clicks it can really really click and you know so you hit on this this sort of gold mine idea um and all this inspiration just sort of like pours out right Right. and so she was writing about loving blogging as a form of, of expression. Um, and then she was, you know, sort of pointing to some of her favorite blogs and it really just, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, some, again, some earth shattering, um, talk that she was talking about. Um, but she, you know, was just talking about this favorite post and falling down this rabbit hole and, um, just sort of everyday beauty. It just right, really right. lovely. Um, and this, this sense of like, you know, learning something, maybe exactly. learning something, falling exactly. down the rabbit hole, and now you're learning about something you didn't know about. Before. Exactly, exactly, so, exactly. It's just you like know, it yeah. takes you different places. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I want to make sure I ask you too, where viewers can find you, your website, uh, email, yeah. any social media you want to share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm on all the socials. Um, 
mostly uh, like on LinkedIn, it's it's under my name, but I also, so, you know, in terms of email, um, I'm jesse at wavemakerwords.com. My website is wavemakerwords.com. Uh, the website is almost there and, um, but certainly people can, can, uh, go, go there and learn about gotcha. you know, what I'm up to. Great. And I'll make sure to put all your info in the video description yeah. too. So yeah. And they can um, book a, a, a complimentary call a consultation, you know, sort of discovery, um, and great. And then we can talk great know, or jumping in. Exactly. All right. That sounds wonderful. Um, Really appreciate you being here. Is there anything else you would like to share with viewers before we close out for today? Um, I would just say, you know, whether it's in the, the college essay or a school assignment or their poems that they write, you know, really nurturing nurturing um, kids' creativity is is the number one goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can do that in, in all kinds of ways. You can, um, you know, I've been a journaler my whole life. I think that's something that uh, even in moments where I was feeling less creative or mm -hmm. sort of um, overwhelmed by life, you know, if, if you just write some things down on a page, mm -hmm. I find that writing by hand really matters, you know, really yeah. um, makes a difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, these are, these are things that are not necessarily natural for today's day and age yeah. where everything's on the screen, but um, uh, take out, take out a blank piece of paper and just, and just start writing, um, you know, go out to a field with anything but your phone and just, you know, observe. I think mm -hmm. that um, so much comes when we slow down and observe That's and it awesome. doesn't, yeah, doesn't have to, to all be, um, yeah, the, the big pressure of, of producing, right. Just right. Right. Exactly. It's in those kind of moments sometimes in life, you know, we have those moments where you're just observing something and what you're observing has meaning and you don't necessarily do anything with it, but it still has meaning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's a really important lesson to take. Yeah. To take uh, with us. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Especially in our age of distractions. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, Jesse, thank you so much for sharing all this today. This has thank been you great. So much. It's really, been really, really important fun. stuff. I love it. Uh, writing is very near and dear to my heart. So Yay. I love hearing about this. Um, yeah. Really appreciate you being here. I will share all your information in the Excellent. video description. And uh, maybe we'll have you back for further discussions. All right. Be great. All right. Thanks again.